Austria's strict measures have set off alarm bells with economists. One said he's expecting a bumpy winter season in Europe. Another said Austria's nationwide lockdown and its planned vaccine mandate are bad signs for the eurozone. Earlier this month, the European Commission marked down its forecast for economic growth. Karsten Brezki is the chief economist for ING Germany, and he joins me now from Berlin. Karsten, great to see you. And thanks for being with us. Um, you know, Europe's already, you know, facing a fragile economic recovery. Now, with the virus cases rising in Europe, I'm curious what you're seeing. What kind of impact will a full lockdown, let's say, in Austria and tighter restrictions in Germany and other countries have on global economic growth? And it will definitely have an impact on the European economy. I think the bad thing is that, that Austria has been leading the way so many times during this pandemic um, in terms of infections, but also in terms of government measures. So given that this country is a full lockdown, I think others will follow. And what this means is that we're going to see a very weak fourth quarter of economic activity. Don't forget, we already have higher energy prices, denting private consumption. We still have these ongoing global supply chain friction, which are weighing on industrial uh, production in Europe. And now on top of that, we will see that the retail sector will be hit that the uh, culture sector will be hit. All these Christmas markets around Europe will be hit again. So I think we were clearly looking into a soft patch at the end of this year, starting off next year. We'll have to wait until spring 2022 before the coronavirus will hopefully be solved. And at the same time, we'll also see that the supply chain frictions will hopefully bring some relief for the European economy. And with that soft patch you're talking about, that brings uncertainty. How does that impact the ECB and the Bank of England's tapering and tightening timetables that are currently in place? Yeah, for the European Central Bank, that is a very tricky one because they haven't talked about tapering so far. Um, ECB President Christina Gard even said that the lady is not tapering. Um, but uh, we are um, reaching a point now at which we have higher inflation. Uh, we have huge inflationary pressure towards the end of the year, probably also in the first month of 2022. We have the, the, uh, the U.S. Fed already starting tapering. And um, if the ECB was now to extend this pandemic emergency program, because we still have the pandemic, um, we might end up in springtime in w when we have a strong rebound of the economy and the ECB still being stuck to its emergency measures. So I think that the ECB will have to look through this soft patch uh, driven by maybe a fourth wave of lockdowns and we'll have to announce a gradual exit from these emergency measures already at the uh, meeting on 16th of December. Now you talked about those supply chain disruptions. They've clearly helped to create inflation that has become much stickier than many had initially predicted. Talk to me about how you see inflation. Is it transitory? If yes, when do you see inflationary pressures easing? We say transitory, but transitory can be, you know, it can last months. <laughs> transitory can be pretty long. <laughs> and I think this is a situation we're currently in. So, yes, inflation will be transitory because it is driven by so many one-off factors, yeah, be it higher energy prices, be it price markups after the lockdowns, um, be, be it also in Germany, the VAT first cut and then uh, a, a re-hike of the VAT rate. So all these one-off factors, um, they should start to abate by the summer of next year. So I'm pretty positive that we will see also um, inflation in the Eurozone to come back to 2% in the second half of next year. But I think when you look further beyond 2022, I think there are clear reasons to argue that medium term inflation will be higher than over the last decade because globalization will become more regionalization reshoring of industrial production. We also have this fight against climate change across the world, which one way or the other will have a positive impact on inflation. So it will push up inflation. So I think mm. by the summer of next year, a central bank like the ECB can celebrate, yes, we're back to at 2%, but in the mm. medium run, we will see that there will be more inflationary pressure in the next 10 years than over the last 10 years. Okay, so meantime, the Turkish lira 
is absolutely plummeting. It's been down as much as 15% against the dollar, a huge move for any currency. Turkish President Erdogan is insisting the country's central bank cut interest rates, cut interest rates to fight inflation. That's, of course, the opposite of what most economists would advise. Mr. Erdogan says he's fighting what he calls an economic war of independence. Listen to this, and I'll come back and talk to you on the other side. We have seen the same game in many international incidents and many platforms. We have risen over every struggle we were engaged in by standing firm. Just as we took our country out of these many traps, misfortunes, with the help of Allah and the support of our people, we will emerge victorious from this economic war of independence. And Carson is still with me. So, Carson, I'm curious to hear your opinion. How dangerous of a game is Erdogan playing here, even beyond the possibility, you know, of a run on the banks as people, you know, lose faith in the value of the currency? Well, this is definitely not a policy recipe you find in any economics textbook. Um, like you said at the beginning, so we have, we, the, the Turkish economy is suffering from extremely high inflation. So this is not the moment at which you should really start uh, cutting interest rates significantly. Um, so how do you get out of here? I think this is an enormous economic experiment. And with, with high risks, I think the only way out, you, know, you could think of, well, could the Turkish economy need help by someone like the International Monetary Fund? Well, I don't see this as an option for Turkey. So I would rather expect that we see a reversal of monetary policy, namely a gradual hike of interest rates in the future again to stabilize the currency and also to stabilize the economy and also trying to bring inflation back down again. All right. Karsten Breski, thanks so much for your perspective today.